Good morning. Welcome to Resurrection Live. We are hoping and praying that all are well and able to join us this morning. We also want to thank all those who were um, able to come out Wednesday to our Wednesday night Lord's Supper, our communion. Um, those who felt comfortable coming and who were able to come, we were so good seeing folks and um, having the opportunity to, to visit with you for a few moments. However, we are not sure, we are uncertain if we will be able to carry on that this, the few coming weeks. So please stay tuned um, either to our website, Facebook page, or email. Um, we will keep everyone posted as how to move forward um, being with the governor's order for us to stay home. So prepare your hearts and minds for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed son of David and king of kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. Grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him with perfect confidence. To the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson today is written in the 50th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah writes, 
The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Here ends the reading. Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, and is made to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. Our second lesson is written in the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the reading. Our Gospel is from St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and, and they followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, and they were asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends the gospel reading. So I'm learning a lot these days. For example, we have this amazing guy here at Resurrection who is doing all of our tech stuff for us, and we're so grateful for that. And he keeps telling me that I need to look into the camera as if I am talking to you. So I have to keep telling myself that it's really not the camera that I'm looking at, that it's you that I get to see. And did you know that the iPhone has now made it so that you can FaceTime with more than one person at a time, talking face to face? So as you know, my children, they live all over the world, basically, and so we did it one day. We got on FaceTime. All of us were on FaceTime at the same time, and we literally just sat there and laughed. We didn't say anything. We just laughed. We thought it was funny. So I've actually even started a website that has um, forums on it, hopefully to have online Bible studies, thinking really, really out of my box. Um, and how many of you really knew about Zoom before now? Um, a lot of people had not even heard about Zoom. And just the other night, I was on the phone with my 27-year-old daughter who lives in New York, and she's telling me all about Instagram. And she says, Mom, don't you know, this is where it's at. And so now she's teaching me all about Instagram. I'm also learning how to do without. Possibly, maybe even have to learn how to do without toilet paper. And actually, that's supposed to be a joke. But I think the biggest thing that I'm learning in these days is to find joy, to find joy in the little things. For example, the joy of seeing my new little grandson, who was only three months old, on, Facebook, on FaceTime. I'm finding joy even just sitting with my two dogs, Sadie and Chester, who seem to love me unconditionally, which is really awesome. And so I want to challenge each of you to think about where you find joy and maybe even a, different, a deeper question, where do you see God and where do you see God in your world that perhaps right now feels very turned upside down? And here we are, it's Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday always marks the beginning of Holy Week, which means we have arrived in Jerusalem with Jesus We've been on this journey through Lent where we've had an opportunity to reflect on our lives, to turn our hearts and minds towards God and what lies ahead for our Lord. And on this day, Jesus and his disciples, here they come, coming into town. It's interesting because many people seem to know him and they recognize him. By the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, many began to listen to his, his teachings intently, and they even began to follow him. Folks came into Jerusalem, some even with full bellies, because Jesus had already fed them twice with just a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread. And many were even astounded by his authority. They were amazed as they witnessed him casting out demons and how he had the capacity to heal the sick. Maybe with all that being said, it was not too surprising about their enthusiasm as they had seen Jesus come in. And here he comes, he arrives. They throw out the royal red carpet with branches from the trees and the cloaks they had on their backs. Here he is, they shouted. Hosanna to the son of David. Their hope was that they would have this Jewish king, just like King David, and now... Thank you, Lord. Life is going to be good again. And so here they are in Jerusalem on this glorious day, a city in turmoil, turmoil over the government, and they need a king. They need justice. They have a desperate need for a Messiah. You know, if I can put myself into the story, I can only imagine that day in Jerusalem, the tension may be so thick you could cut it with a knife, the tension between a humble king that rides on a donkey, proclaiming the kingdom of God, the tension between Jesus and Pilate, who stood in his tower proclaiming the power of empire. 
this conflict, this tension between these two proclamations, between the messianic and the non-messianic, is a story, it's an outcome that you and I, we could have never predicted or even imagined. And these poor disciples, come on, they had to be so confused. Just before they arrived into town, Jesus told them, not once, but twice, now three times. Here's what's going to happen, you know, when we get to Jerusalem. I'm going to tell you how it's going to go down. And he tells them, the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes. They'll condemn him to death. I'll be mocked and flocked and crucified and on the th third day be raised. Wow. We get into Jerusalem and here are the people and they're raising their hands. Hosanna and the highest, the son of David. This isn't anything like Jesus told us it would be when we get to, to Jerusalem. We get here and it's all oh, glory, laud, and honor. Save us, Jesus. Save us from the Romans. Save us from our illnesses. Save us from being hungry. Save us from the demons that haunt us. Hosanna and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Indeed, a far cry from crucifixion. Jesus rides on. Rides into town, humbled on a donkey to bring peace in the midst of a city of turmoil. He's on a donkey. Why would any government be threatened by a man on a donkey? So they ask the question of the day, who is this? And the people respond, well, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Well, here we are in Jerusalem, in the city of turmoil, confusion, and chaos. The tension is so thick between the messianic and the non-messianic. I know you can feel it. I know you can see it. Torn between letting your heart turn towards fear or letting your heart turn towards the God that is on his way to climb up on that cross. The people that day in Jerusalem had no clue. They saw God. They saw God riding into town on a donkey. They saw God in the midst of a Roman government, government that was brutal and unjustified. They saw God in the midst of their lives who had healed them, fed them, and loved them. Who is this man? I ask you, where do you see God today in your life? It's hard sometimes, but he's here. In the midst of all of our turmoil and chaos and confusion, he's here in our joy. He's here in the little things that bring us so much happiness. He shows up in our children, our grandchildren, our siblings, and our parents. And sometimes all we need to do to see God is maybe walk outside, hear the birds chirping in the spring air. That day, Jesus rode into town on a donkey, and they found it difficult to believe. Wow, here he is, our king. Hosanna in the highest. We now have hope. And we're filled with amazing joy. And he came for us. Not just the Romans, not just the Jews, but for all of us. So Jesus rides on all the way to the cross. The cross where Jesus predicts his death to the disciples no one could fathom that this man would be resurrected from the dead. This man, our Lord who saves us from sin and death, this man who brings us grace and mercy and joy, this man, a gift from God our Father, a gift of God's amazing love, a gift of love that we don't deserve gift of love that we cannot earn, a gift of love that we couldn't even begin to afford. It's a gift of pure love, a gift that does come with a cost. And so Jesus rides on all the way to the cross for us. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we seek in this Lenten time to grow in our faith, let us pray for the life of the world. For the whole church, that the love of God shown in Christ's passion may be reflected in its words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace and harmony among the religions and nations of the world, that celebrations of Passover and Easter be delivered from bloodshed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in any need during this Holy Week, those affected by the COVID-19 crisis, also for Elvi and Janie and Jacob and Belva, that they may find comfort and relief from God and from those who follow in the way of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, that through the celebration of Christ's passion, our ministry might be renewed and our faith restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We humbly ask that you watch over the members of our congregation. And today we especially pray for Pat Ward, Mark Kreider, Jimmy Allison, Hunter, and Grace Buchanan. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remembering all the faithful departed, especially Bobby Nuremberger, that we may at length celebrate with them the unending feast of the Paschal Lamb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant these prayers, merciful God, and all that we need as we eagerly await the Easter feast of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.